Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. I hope that you all are well in the Lord. It's good to see you guys. I'm smiling because I'm just so honored and happy to be your sister. And I thank you all for coming to hear what thus saith the Lord. So people of God, the Lord has led me to issue two different prophetic words. This is going to be part one and it's going to be a part two in the upcoming days. Okay. This particular word is titled your harvest for 2021, what you will reap indicators. So this word is God's way of giving us a glimpse of the indicators of what our harvests are going to look like in the upcoming months in the year of 2021. Okay. So this word is actually going to be in preparation to receiving our harvest for the seeds that we have planted in 2020. Guys, this word is founded on Galatians chapter six, verses seven through nine. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So guys, that is what this word is founded on, as well as the previous video that God gave me to record called your reaping did not get away and you guys should see um, something up top here to let you click it and you'll be able to watch that video so god gave me some indicators today to give to you and some of these indicators are for the righteous and some of these indicators are for the wicked or the people that will not repent for the people that refuse to repent this is a continuance of the word that god gave us called the reaping did not get away all right and later on in the week i'm going to release the other half of this word part two which is going to give us the details of what we should expect our harvests to look like in the year of 2021 but for today i'm just going to give you guys the indicators that God gave me in preparation for our harvest. So if you guys want to get yourself a paper and a pen, I think if you jot these indicators down, it's going to kind of give you an idea of what to look for. They may be prayer points for some of you. They may be points of joy for you. It just depends on where you fall in these indicator categories. But before we get into the word, let's go ahead and say a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we come to you humbly and hungry for the word of God. Father, we just thank you so much for loving us more than we love ourselves. We thank you, Lord God, for being our shepherd, for being our source. We thank you, Lord, for walking with us and talking with us. Father, we understand that you are the reason that we breathe. We understand that all of your prophetic words, your instructions, your warnings, your encouragement are all for our good and for the purpose of building us up and lifting us up and giving us the opportunity to repent if we need to. Father God, we thank you for preparing us. We thank you for walking with us down this straight and narrow path that only leads to the gates of heaven. Father God, we ask that we are able to pull our strength for you as we are facing opposition, as we are living in the last days, as we see the oppression and the chaos and the confusion in the world. Father God, we thank you for your direction. We thank you for your instructions and we will take heed to all of them. Father God, we thank you for giving us a place to dwell up under your wings. We thank you for a place that we can come to to be at peace, Father God. We ask that you will continue to dispatch your angels to surround us, to surround this broadcast, to minister to us, to surround our children, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your heart for us. We thank you for your continued mercies and grace. We thank you for your long suffering. Father God, we just ask, Lord God, that you open up our hearts and minds to receive your word for today. We, we thank you, Lord God, 
for putting us in position to be able to hear this word. We thank you, Lord God, for the harvest that you are getting ready to release to the righteous. And Father God, we pray that even for the wicked, even for the people, Lord God, that have not repented as of yet, that they will repent today, that they will turn away from their sinful ways, Lord God, and ask for forgiveness and receive your forgiveness and to totally surrender themselves to you to start anew today to begin their journey with you on the straight and narrow we thank you lord god that you are almighty father god you are the alpha the omega king of kings and lord of lords and we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be saved today. We thank you so much, Lord God, for not taking us out of this world before we were able to repent and to receive you as our Lord and Savior. Father God, we believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord. We believe that he died on the cross and that he rose again. Father God, forgive us for our transgressions. Forgive us for our sins and receive us in your midst. Receive us in your family. And we thank you, God, for your mercy in having us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So remember, guys, show yourself approved. How do you do that? You must test, test the spirit. Any word that comes out of my mouth or any other servant of the Lord, you should be testing that word to make sure that what is being spoken is for you. If it brings confirmation or if God needs to really deal with your heart about it, it doesn't matter. You should be testing all prophetic words, warnings, whatever. OK, and also I am not in position to explain God's word. I'm not in position to add to God's word, nor can I take away. So that is another reason why you all need to test, test the spirit. Okay, guys, this is what God says. God says that for the righteous, your harvest will be based on the following seeds you have previously planted. Number one, sacrifice. God says, what does sacrifice mean? It means something that is given up or lost for the sake of others. God says, as an example, when you sacrifice, that may mean that you will go without eating so that someone else can eat. Number two, love. God says, what does love mean? It means to have an intense meaning of deep affection for someone else. God says, as an example, you love your brother, even though they do not express the same love for you. Number three, compassion. God says, what does compassion mean? It means to have a strong concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. God says to use yourself as an example. This means when you stand up for those who are being wronged, even though they may have wronged you. Number four, honesty. God says, what does honesty mean? It means the quality of being honest, telling the truth. God says, use yourself as an example. And as an example, this is when you tell the truth about something, even if it means that you are going to lose someone or something. Number five, integrity. God says, what does integrity mean? It means to be honest and have strong moral principles and morals and uprightness. God says, as an example, this is when you model the character of Jesus Christ while dealing or communicating with others. Number six, commitment. God says, what does commitment mean? It means to be dedicated to a cause or an activity. God says, as an example of this, you can put yourself in the shoes of holding on to the promises and plans that I have given you in the face of adversity, opposition, and suffering. Number seven, forgiveness. 
God says, what is forgiveness? It is the process of forgiving or being forgiven. God says, as an example, this is when you forgive your sister or your brother for lying on you, despite knowing that he or she was wrong. These are the indicators for the righteous for the next upcoming harvest. God then says that for the wicked or for the people that do not want to repent, your harvest will be based on the following seeds you have planted in the year 2020. Number one, condemnation. God says, what does condemnation mean? It means the action of condemning a person to a certain punishment or a certain sentence. God says, as an example of this, it means that when you say, or when you said that someone is going to go to hell, even though I, the Lord your God, did not tell you that. Number two, slander. God says, what does slander mean? It means making a false statement in attempt to damage a person's reputation. As an example, God says, this is when you speak lies about your brother or your sister or someone else so that he or she is looked at by others in a negative way. Number three, mockery. God says, what does mockery mean? It means to tease or to put forth disrespectful behavior that is directed at a particular person, thing, or situation. God says, as an example of this, this is when you seek to talk down about a person or a situation in front of other people. Number four, judgment. God says, what does judgment mean? It is an opinion or conclusion that is made about someone prematurely. God says, as an example of this, is when you come against your brother or your sister or someone else outside of the counsel of me, the Lord your God. But instead you speak based upon your own feelings and emotions. Number five, envy and or jealousy. What does envy mean, says God? It means to feel resentful about someone else's possessions, their qualities, or my favor. An example of this is when you pretend to support your brother or your sister or someone else, but you are really waiting for them to fail. Number six, divination. God says, what does divination mean? It means the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means that are other than the Holy Spirit. God says, as an example of this is when you teach, when you speak, when you preach or you prophesy, they are lies and they are deceitful and they did not come from me, the Lord, your God. And finally, number seven, witchcraft. God says, what is witchcraft? It is the practice of magic and the use of spells. God says, as an example of this is when you release black magic, spells, wicked prayers, and word curses against your brother or your sister or someone else in an attempt to sabotage or destroy the plans that I, the Lord, your God, have for them. These are my indicators for your upcoming harvest, says the living God. People of God, that is the word from the Lord, and it is firm, okay? God just gave us a glimpse of our harvest that will be based on the indicators that he gave us in this message. God is also giving us the opportunity to repent regarding the seeds that we planted in 2020. The purpose of this word, guys, also is so that God will be in position to extend his mercy and his grace according to his will and glory for your life. If you happen to fall in a category where you have planted bad seed into the ground. So guys, I encourage you, I encourage you to take heed to this word, go to the altar, do what you need to do to make it right. 
God understands that none of us are perfect and we all fall short of the glory of God. So if you are in a place where you have made a mistake or you have done something, now is the time for you to make it right with God. Okay. So remember, we are here on purpose to glorify God in Jesus' holy name. I love you all. I thank you for coming. I thank you all for subscribing to Shanika Byers United for Christ. I thank you all for subscribing to our second channel, United for Christ Prayer Room. I thank you all for shopping with us and becoming members of this ministry. If it is the Lord's will, I will be back here sometime this week to give you part two of this message. I love you guys. Be blessed. Bye.